My name is Adam York, uh, CEO here at Equips, and we are talking to um, Matthew Swemline, Branch Technology Supervisor at Ultra Federal Credit Union. And our topic today is interactive teller machines. So uh, Matthew, welcome. Nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. We're going to talk about interactive teller machines, but tell us a little bit about kind of your role and what the mission of that is and, and what that looks like. Sure. So uh, we made the, the push to go deeper into the interactive teller machine uh, hole, I guess, uh, back in 2018. Um, and what the, the credit union was really looking for was someone to not only spearhead that, but continue the maintenance and kind of take over the, the branch technology at that time. So uh, what I do is I oversee all of the ATMs, all of our ITMs, uh, and really any other branch technology uh that, that we have. So cash recyclers, uh, some coin machines, uh, security cameras, uh, really anything that technology wise that's in the branches. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's, that's every day, it feels like that's more and more of a, an impact on what a branch looks like, right? It's so technology driven. Absolutely. Yep. yep. So talk a little bit about as, as the credit union was evaluating going down this, this path of interactive teller machines. What, what was kind of the major rally cry about why you did this? What were you trying to accomplish? At the time, uh, we were opening two new branches um, and we were looking to get into a, a self-serve model where we wouldn't have to have our members use employees for the simpler transactions, withdrawals, deposits, transfers, um, things that could really easily be automated or taken care of themselves. So the branch structure that we had for those two new branches kind of, it went away from the traditional teller line. Um, and we went at more towards a full employee is the best way to put it. Our ITMs, what we were looking for is for them to handle the simple things, like I said, withdrawals, deposits. Um, and that would basically free up our employees to help our members uh, with services, uh, really identify how we could help them best um, and free them up to help our members live their best lives. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great goal. And how, how did you begin to test that out to see if it would work or not? How did you begin that kind of process of um, implementing the, the technology? It was really a trial by fire. Um, like I said, we opened those two new branches. We didn't have uh, any of those universal employees, ITM branches prior to our opening them in 2018. So we basically installed and just, we saw how it, how it would go and to, uh, to our credit, it's been working pretty well. We've seen great strides uh, in how our members are using the technology. And we're, I think we're opening at least two more branches in that style here in the next couple of years. So um, it worked out really well. Oh, that's great. Um, you know, there's, there's the process of like, you're going down this path, you want to accomplish this goal, you've got this idea, and then you've got to bring people along with you. They have to want to participate in this, your team, your members, Talk about what you did for your team to kind of get them ready for this. There could be some fear and trepidation around, hey, we're bringing in something new. It's really different. How did you get them ready to make that work? Oh, absolutely. There, were, there was a lot of that. Like I said, this was the first time we went away from the traditional teller line. So there was a lot of training on the ITMs, making sure our employees were not only familiar with it, but excited for it. That was I think the, the biggest factor in our success was our, our employees were very excited about the technology, excited about what it could bring to our members um, and really what it could bring to their, their work lives as well. So uh, we spent a lot of time with training, with making sure they were familiar, they understood what they were doing and uh, streamlining the processes on the back end. So all groups, you know, accounting, uh, our technology group, the, the front end, uh, employees all were excited and ready to use the, the technology. Well, that's a really good insight because um, I would think about the people right in the branch, but it really is across the credit union, isn't it? It touches a lot of different functional areas. Yeah, it touches, I mean, deposit our deposit group, our accounting group, our IT folks, obviously, our group, the retail group, it touches all the, all the, all the parts of the credit union. Marketing gets involved. It's a, yeah, it's a credit union-wide business. So what was the time frame from, hey, we think we're going to go this way to maybe like installation? So in between that, we, we, were, we think we're going to go this way to installation. That's probably when you're getting people kind of on board. What, what kind of a time frame did that end up being? I, I would say the initial timeline was probably nine months to a year uh, from project kickoff to when we got the ITMs installed in the branches. And then 
for perfecting everything and getting everything working how we wanted it to, it was probably another nine months to a year. So a total year and a half to uh, almost two years. So it's a commitment. This is not yes. just, we're going to try this. We're, we're committed to this strategy. And, and what about your members? Because um, obviously that was why you did this was to kind of focus on your members and your team. So um, how, how did they do with it? What are some of the lessons you learned about how to introduce this to your members that you might use in the future? Like I said, the biggest thing, making sure the employees are excited for it, uh, making sure they know what they're doing was, was a big factor. Uh, they were excited to show the members. We built the, the process of showing the member into our member onboarding program. So if we got a new member, part of our tour of the credit union would be how to use the machine. Uh, what the process of a transaction looks like. And you will absolutely get members who still want to deal with people who still want to come into the traditional teller line. So um, sure. part of our strategy was uh, introducing these in markets where we did have those traditional teller line branches. So if they didn't want to use the machines, um, we could absolutely direct them to uh, another branch that was relatively close by if they want to continue doing business that way. So I, I think that's the main thing, just having options available because like I said you will absolutely get people who do not want to embrace it but uh, having the staff be excited about it and ready to show how it can improve their lives was was a big help. How did you measure adoption? How did you were you able to kind of see a difference in usage over time? Like how, how could you tell how much the technology was being adopted by your members? We couldn't um, I guess measure it against what the branch was previous to, previously doing, because like I said, these were completely new branches. Uh, we measured in um, how many transactions were being done compared to our, our teller branches in the same area, how much money was being deposited or withdrawn compared to our tellers in the other areas. And I guess total okay. transaction counts was another big one. Talk a little bit about kind of the um, actual equipment process, because there's, there's multiple options, there's multiple company out there making machines that do kind of this process. Um, what technology did you end up kind of selecting and, and what were the factors that made that the winner for what you were trying to do? We ended up going with uh, Hyosung models. Uh, I believe we started out with the 8800s and the 7800s and I think there's a few more models out now. Um, but it was a, a rigorous testing process on our part. Uh, the core integration was the, the biggest factor for us. It, it's what we really wanted to have in these branches. We wanted our members to be able to interact with these machines as if they were a teller. We didn't really want there to be a difference. So uh, the ability to perform base 95% of all the transactions they could with a teller at the machine was the biggest factor. Um, we went on a tour of uh, the Heosung facility in Dallas and we did tours with uh, Diebold and NCR to um, finding a local partner who would be able to service these, be able to respond to our issues quickly. Uh, so we didn't have a, a ton of downtime was also important. Um, and really what would be attractive and intuitive to our members uh, while they're using it was another big factor. So getting actually hands-on with the equipment matters a lot to you. Basically. Yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And uh, if I remember correctly, the way that you use this is a little different than that. You, you don't have a remote teller on these, right? Is this teller assist or, or tell me kind of like how, how you, if someone needs help, do they push a button and get help on the screen? How do they get help? Sure. Uh, so we have a few different models uh, it, uh, in our lobby units. Um, we have the universal employees that are close by um, and we do have them able to be pinged via tablet. Um, so if there needs to be a check review, if uh, they need to be, they forgot their debit card and they need to be identified um, with their ID, they can hit the need assist button on there. The universal employee will come help them. But in the drive up there, there is no remote teller. Um, there is no assist there because we can't have our employees running outside all the time, especially in winter in Wisconsin. Training uh, during the member onboarding process has been I guess our, our, our biggest assistance point is making sure that they're comfortable using it. So there aren't a ton of issues uh, that they need assistance with. This is really, really helpful. If you were kind of like talking to yourself a couple of years ago and telling yourself, these are the things you need to keep in mind, or as you kind of even roll forward, 
what are some of the, the more important things do you think to remember as someone goes down this journey of exploring putting these these machines? I think we touched on it previously, but getting the entire credit union involved, uh, like you said, this these machines end up touching a lot of parts of the credit union. I think making sure everyone is on board with what you're doing. Uh, we did have a few things during the initial process where we really liked what we were doing, but we ended up, you know, convening with the other member uh, parts of our business and it, it didn't work for their group. So we had to go back to the drawing board and make sure we got a solution that worked for everyone. Yeah, Thank you so much for, for your input, for your time. This has been, uh, it's been really great. Thanks for having me, Adam.